What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Decno Buffalo here with a full review for you of one of the latest flagship phones in Verizon's ever-growing Android lineup. This is the HTC built Resound and for all intensive purposes, it's the spiritual successor to the not-so-old HTC Thunderbolt. Let's go ahead and dig in and see if this guy is worthy of resounding reviews and bad puns. All right, so before we jump into the full review, let me talk about the specs of this guy, and there's a lot of specs in here to talk about. All right, so let's start with price. Uh, right now from the carrier, it's $249, although perhaps by the time you're watching this review or going to the holiday season, that price is gonna fluctuate. So you're going to want to check on that. Uh, it's running Android 2.3.4 with HTC Sense 3.5 sitting on top of it. We'll talk about all this stuff more in the review. From a dimension standpoint, it's 5.08 inches by 2.58 inches by a kind of chunky 0.54 inches. Uh, the display though is where most of the action happens. That's what you're looking at right now. This guy is a 4.3 inch, which we've seen many times before, SLCD panel with the resolution of, wait for it, 1280 by 720, that's right. This is a 720p display, and for those of you that can do quick math or have a calculator watch handy, that's 342 PPI, which is absolutely insane. We're gonna spend a lot of time talking about this display in the review. Uh, what's gonna keep this display up and illuminated is a 1,620 milliamp hour battery, all being powered by a Qualcomm built dual core, 1.5 gigahertz chip, it's got a gig of RAM, uh, 16 gigs of internal storage, expandable with micro um, SD. On the back side, dual LED flash with a camera that can shoot 1080p video. Uh, it's got a two megapixel shooter on the front, Verizon LTE, which we'll definitely talk about uh, as we go through the full review. Bluetooth 3.0 and bam, beats audio. All right, so now we ran through the uh, really ample specs of this device. Let's go ahead and talk about call quality. If it's not gonna make good phone calls, it's not gonna be overly useful to you. Uh, like most Verizon phones I've reviewed recently, uh, call quality was relatively good on this guy. Uh, I did have about three dropped calls uh, in notorious Verizon dead zones where I am in Southern California. Um, during about a 20 call test, my testing period with the Resound was probably on the shorter side. Uh, around the 15 call uh, test. So whether that's typical or atypical, uh, it's gonna depend on where you're located. But when the calls were there and not dropped, uh, they were crystal clear, I had no popping noise, didn't have any white noise, uh, and oftentimes the callers thought that I was on a landline. By the callers, I mean, I mostly just called my wife to see how I sounded uh, as we were, um, or as I was uh, driving through certain areas. Uh, I did have a bit of an issue though, pairing it with um, certain Bluetooth devices, a uh, Jabra in particular, uh, it dropped the pairing twice before it finally held onto it. All right, so now as promised, let's talk about this guy. This display is worthy of several minutes uh, of a review. So it's 4.3 inches, 1280 by 720, 342 uh, PPI. Uh, when you compare that to what was considered one of the best displays in the business, the Retina display, uh, that's just over 320 PPI on the iPhone 4 and the 4S. Uh, so you can really appreciate uh, the amount of pixels that this guy packs in. Uh, and it packs a tremendous amount. And it does it without uh, being a pentile display. It uses a standard uh, RGB matrix. So what's that going to mean for you? Not all that much, um, but images and videos are going to look outstanding. Uh, you're not going to have any pixelation at all with the naked eye. But don't take my word for it. Let me go ahead and show you. So we'll jump ahead into gallery. Uh, I've got some images here queued up. Go ahead and move that over. I believe that is the Dubai skyline. Uh, and it is just absolutely gorgeous here. No pixelation at all on images. Things really, really, really pop. The only thing that's gonna make the viewing experience not so pleasurable is the fingerprint magnet display. Uh, I know a lot of devices are oleophobic or can sort of get some of the grease not to show. Somehow, this one, it all tends to sort of pool this is a gross word to say, but uh, it definitely shows uh, the grease there. You can see a picture of the New York skyline, or at least the New York City streets. Uh, absolutely beautiful. So let me go ahead and show you some video, because that's really where the 720p display um, shines, or one of the many ways the 720p really shines. So I'll go ahead and jump into video. Go ahead and pick this guy. 
you could hear some of the audio coming through it as well. And it's gonna be tough to appreciate the video coming from the phone to the camera to YouTube, no matter what resolution you're watching it on. Uh, but take my word for it, it is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, watching videos on here is a pleasure, as you'd expect from uh, a screen with this incredible resolution. Um, you can see it even just by looking at the home screen. Let's go ahead and take a look at some text, and probably what you're gonna be doing a lot on this phone uh, is looking at websites or reading. So let's go ahead and look at Netflix shares dropping. So we're on technobuffalo.com. Uh, and right off the bat, because of the high resolution, you might notice that the text is a little bit on the small side. It's so crisp uh, that the text becomes a little bit smaller uh, to the naked eye and because of that higher resolution. Uh, so I found myself, at least, having to do a little bit of zoom action uh, to read. Now, this is really going to depend on your eyesight. If you have tremendous eyes um, and you're not going to have any trouble reading the smaller text, you are going to love this phone. If you've got slowly fading crappy eyes like me, you're gonna find yourself again doing a lot of zooming and maybe wishing for a little bit of a lower resolution so the text would appear a bit bigger. I know I sound like my grandfather when I say I wish the text was gonna be bigger, uh, but oftentimes that was true. Um, but as you zoom all the way in, you don't see any sort of pixelation at all. Uh, the text here is absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's probably the best uh, display that I've ever seen. You don't have any sort of blue tint that you get with some AMOLED panels. Uh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. This is a phone that you have to look at in the store uh, to appreciate. So I'll go ahead and jump back. Uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is speed. How fast is this guy? Uh, well, the answer is pretty fast. Um, I didn't have any memory issues at all as I was running through using applications. Uh, on first or second generation Android devices, Oftentimes you had to install uh, memory killers or memory management applications to control how much memory you were using. Um, not so the case um, with the modern devices. Uh, Android's done a really nice job, and of course we're running Gingerbread 2.3.4 here, uh, managing memory. You have uh, built-in memory management if you use it, but scrolling through applications, uh, you're not gonna have any sort of issue at all. Uh, from a quadrant score, which is what I generally use to gauge my phones. Uh, it didn't put up blazing numbers. This is a stock ROM. It put up a score of 2,269. Uh, and this is probably one of those instances too where you can see how high the pixel resolution is. I had to squint all the way in to read that number. Uh, really very tiny. Um, but that was the score, again, 2,269. Um, speed on this guy, and one of the best things about it, uh, is Verizon's LTE network. And again, it's gonna vary depending where you are, uh, but I was pulling in blazing numbers. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and make sure Wi-Fi is disconnected. You can see one of the Sense 3.5 settings. So Wi-Fi is turned off. I wanna run a speed test live on camera. I don't generally do this, uh, but I wanna show you how fast these speeds are. You can see some of my previous results there. Uh, absolutely blazing. Uh, and I'd wager a bet this is faster than most home networks. Um, Getting now in the in the tens, I was getting in the thirteens down pretty regularly, and I was getting about five up, which we're seeing right here, uh, is absolutely incredible speeds uh, to get from a mobile network. Um, so my hats off to Verizon again. This is going to depend on where you are and whether or not you get LTE. I'm in Southern California, but those speeds are incredible. Uh, so on this test, I got eleven down. Uh, and about four up, and oftentimes my speeds were even faster than that. Uh, LTE definitely gets two giant uh, thumbs up. Uh, if you're looking to get a Verizon phone right now, for sure uh, only get one uh, that offers LTE. But what's gonna make all this data speed show you stuff, uh, and that's the software. Uh, and this is running HTC Sense 3.5. I'll run it and show you that. And it's actually the second phone uh, to run HTC Sense 3.5. Uh, the HTC Rhyme being the previous one. So Sense 3.5, Android 2.3.4. You can see all kinds of other uh, software there. Uh, there's not that much to report in Sense 3.5. It gets some niceties. Uh, you get slow motion video capture. You can remove home screens. Uh, but the rest of the stuff is all pretty standard HTC Sense that we've seen uh, in the past, including one of my favorite features. It actually made its way to the official build of ice cream sandwich, which this does not have. Uh, this is the ability to sort of drag applications. So ice cream sandwich has the camera there, um, but it's nice, you can drag applications right in there and it will quick launch for you. So there's the, the camera, for example. Go ahead and close out of here. 
Uh, the next big selling point, and one of the things we mentioned in our specs overview, is the B on the back. Not the Buffalo, this is Beats Audio. And unfortunately, this is something that you're going to have to take my word for it because I can't really show you what it sounds like. Um, but I will say that it comes with a pair of iBeats headphones. You can see them right here with inline mic built in and all kinds of uh, controls, management, and that kind of stuff. See the microphone. There's the uh, little pinhole mic and all your controls. Here are the iBeats. These do come in the box uh, and are about a $100 value. So essentially, the Beats technology, uh, it's kind of a skinned music player. Um, with Beats enabled, and it's got a special sound profile. It sounds good. I definitely noticed a difference with the iBeats, um, but it wasn't a giant difference. I used the iBeats in a non-Beats Audio official device, and audio sounded pretty good. Uh, the Beats Audio is a fun logo. It wouldn't be a compelling reason to go out and buy the phone, unless you want a really good pair of headphones that you're looking to buy anyway. You could sort of wrap them all uh, into one package. So let's talk a little bit about the design. Uh, kind of interesting, and I do like that these buttons are painted on here. They're not backlit. They don't disappear. Uh, your capacitive buttons across the bottom, pretty standard Android fare here. You've got your uh, HTC home button, which is sort of like a, uh, what kind of shape would that be? So it's a, I don't know, it looks like a house. Um, you've got a menu button, a back button, and a search button. Uh, on the left-hand side of the device, that's where charging is going to live. On the right hand side is a sort of hard to recognize with your thumb and difficult to push volume rocker up and down. Um, you'll also notice that you don't have a camera button here, which is one design uh, cue I really wish this had. On the top, 3.5 millimeter headset jack. When you're holding it like you would a phone, my favorite position, um, the power and lock button there is in the upper right hand corner. You've got your microphones and such uh, on the bottom and top. You've got this rubber back. I really do love the uh, HTC build quality. Whether or not they use metal or rubber or plastic, it always feels really high quality. Uh, no exception here. This is sort of a kind of an a HTC incredible look with the different layers of, of height on the side, as you can see that. And all this makes for a very heavy phone, uh, especially when you compare it with one of the other flagship phones in Verizon's lineup here. This is the, of course, the Droid Razor. Um, and of course, at the thinnest end and the thinnest end, you can see a huge difference. But even in the fattest end to the fattest end, you can see that it's still even a little bit thinner. So this is by no means a thin phone, but also by no means a light phone, uh, weighing 5.78 ounces. Uh, I do wish that the bottom was all one, uh, was it one altitude, I guess? Um, probably not the right way to say that. Uh, but I do wish it all had one. Perhaps it would have made it for a bit of a thinner experience. But does stay pretty flat. It's not going to have the rock uh, that some other uh, older HTC devices had. So it'll probably stay pretty solid uh, as you're using it if you want to, uh, to type. Speaking of typing, the more I use it, the less of a fan I become of uh, the HTC keyboard here. I don't know why it feels cramped. Uh, maybe it's the screen size, but I just didn't like using it, especially with the sea of other uh, great Android keyboards out there. Even the stock uh, Android one I really enjoy. Uh, but one of the nice things about an open source operating system is if you don't like the keyboard, you can replace it with one you like. I know there are a lot of swipe fans uh, out there. From the camera standpoint, it's, you know, it's a pretty average camera nowadays. Uh, it takes decent pictures. It's got some, whoa, <laughs> some uh, average low light visibility. It was pretty good in direct sunlight. Nothing to write home about. You're not going to uh, necessarily want to replace this with your point and shoot, but when you do want to snap a quick picture or two, uh, it's going to be fine for you. I'm not that much of a camera snob or even a camera uh, expert. Pictures looked decent. I wasn't going to blow them up and make posters of them, uh, but if I wanted to share them on Facebook, uh, the camera quality was all right. Uh, the battery I did want to talk about. Uh, it's a 1,620 milliamp hours, which sounds like a pretty big battery. Uh, but when you factor in a 4.3 inch screen uh, with that high of a PPI and uh, dual core and LTE, you're in theory going to have a recipe for battery drain and disaster. Uh, and while certainly not disastrous, uh, I had a difficult time getting through a full day with the HTC Resound. And my day may differ than your day, uh, but with two emails constantly being pulled in, about an hour and a half to two hours of phone calls, uh, pretty regular web checking uh, on here, I barely uh, got home around 8 o'clock and the battery was just about to keel over. 
Uh, so you may want to keep a spare handy. And one of the things that this offers that something like the Droid Razor does not is that battery. Go ahead and turn that off. Uh, it's actually user replaceable. It's got kind of a cool red look to it on the back as well. Go ahead and get this off. It's harder than it looks. Peel. There we go. That's where the battery's going to live. Uh, it's also where your 16 gig uh, extra external card is going to be as well. So you can put an extra battery. You can get that extra uh, charge if you need. Uh, you are going to want to be judicious though if you're traveling and you're not going to be near a charger uh, for a full day. Um, so do I recommend this phone? Yeah, I absolutely recommend this phone. Uh, if you're on Verizon and you're looking for a really solid option, especially if you're looking towards Android, uh, I'd be hard pressed to not recommend the Resound. Uh, certainly if size is a concern for you, uh, you may be better off looking at something like the Droid Razor um, with its Kevlar back and sort of thin uh, design. Uh, but if you're looking for sort of raw specs, um, it's going to be very hard to beat the display of the HTC Resound. If you have tremendous eyesight, and I, I started to mention this more and more in reviews because as displays get better and better, they're becoming more important, uh, you're going to really like this phone. If you wear glasses sometimes uh, and your eyesight might not be perfect 2020 or even better, uh, this is a phone you're going to want to try actually in the store uh, to make sure you can read the text when you're browsing a website. Um, for someone like me, again, with not the best eyesight, I could live with it uh, and I could be very happy reading text, doing my little zoom action, uh, but it wouldn't be the most ideal. I prefer a lower resolution. However, if you watch a lot of video or you look, watch a lot of media pictures or what have you uh, on your phone, it's going to be really hard to beat that resolution. So you sort of get both sides uh, of that coin. Beats Audio is a nice sort of addition, but it's by no means reason to go out and get this phone. Uh, you get those headphones included, which is, you know, great. Um, so this phone would definitely get recommended. Uh, if size is going to be a concern or you want a bigger display, uh, you're going to want to look at some of the other options in Verizon's lineup. But if you're looking for 4.3 inches, really incredible resolution, fast phone, uh, it's going to be a great choice. HTC has said ice cream sandwich will be coming. Um, no official date as to when that's going to be, but you will expect to get uh, some cold, tasty dessert on this sometime in 2012. Um, and if you're looking to get this again, Galaxy Nexus is also coming out, so you might want to do some cross shopping. Uh, I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Be sure to check us out for all your tech news, reviews, unboxings, and the rest of the gossip and grumbling from the tech world. Be sure to check us out, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.